This lecture is about the feedback in text retrieval. So in this lecture, we are going to continue the discussion of text retrieval methods. In particular, we're going to talk about the feedback in text retrieval. This is a diagram that shows the retrieval process. We can see the user would type in a query and then the query would be sent to a retrieval engine or search engine and the engine will return results. These results will be shown to the user. Now after the user has seen these results, the user can actually make judgments. So for example, the user has said, well, this is good and this document is not very useful. This is good again, etc." Now this is called a relevance judgment or relevance feedback because we've got some feedback information from the user based on the judgments. And this can be very useful to the system to learn what exactly uh, is interesting to the user. So the feedback module would then take this as input and also use the document collection to try to improve ranking. Typically, it would involve updating the query so the system can now rank the results more accurately for the user. So this is called relevance feedback. The feedback is based on relevance judgments uh, made by the users. Now, these judgments are reliable, but users uh, generally don't want to make extra effort unless they have to. So the downside is that it involves some extra effort by the user. There is another form of feedback called a pseudo-relevance feedback or blind feedback, also called automatic feedback. In this case, you can see once the user has got results, or in fact, we don't have to involve users. So you can see there's no user involved here. And we simply assume that the top ranked documents to be relevant. Let's say we can assume you know, top 10 as relevant. And then we will then use these assumed documents to learn and to improve the query. Now you might wonder, you know, how could this help if we simply assume the top ranked documents to be relevant? Well, uh, you can imagine these top ranked documents are actually similar to relevant documents, even if they are non-relevant, they look like relevant documents. So it's possible to learn some related terms to the query from this set. In fact, you may recall that we talked about using language model to analyze word association to learn related words to the word computer, right? And there what we did is we'll first use computer to retrieve all the documents that contain computer. So imagine now the query here is a computer, right? And then the results will be those documents that contain computer. And what we can do then is to take the top end results, they can match computer very well, and we're going to count uh, the terms in this set. And then we're going to then use the background language model to choose the terms that are frequent in this set, but not frequent in the whole collection. So if we make a contrast between these two, what we can uh, find is that we will learn some related terms to the word computer, as we have seen before. And these related words can then be added to the uh, original query to expand the query. And this would help us bring documents that don't necessarily match computer, but match other words like a program and software. So this is very effective for improving the search uh, result. But of course, pseudo-relevance feedback is completely unreliable. We have to arbitrarily set a cutoff. So there's also something in between called implicit feedback. In this case, what we do is we do involve users, but we don't have to have ask users to make judgments. Instead, we're going to observe how the user interacts with the search results. So in this case, we're going to look at the click throughs. So the user clicked on this one, and the, the user viewed this one, and the user skipped this one, and the user viewed this one again. Now this also is a clue about whether a document is useful to the user. And we can even uh, assume that we're going to use only the snippet here in this document, the text that's actually seen by the user. 
instead of the actual document uh, of this entry. Right? The link there, let's say in web search, may be broken, but then it doesn't matter. If the user tried to fetch this document because of the displayed text, we can assume this displayed text is probably relevant, is interesting to user. So we can learn from such information. And this is called implicit feedback. And we can, uh, again, use the information to update the query. This is a very important technique uh, used in modern search engines. You know, think about the uh, Google and Bing, and they can collect a lot of user activities while they are serving us. Right? So they would observe what documents we click on, what documents we skip. And this information is very valuable. And they can use this to improve the, the search engine. So to summarize, we talked about the three kinds of feedback here. Uh, relevance feedback, where the user makes explicit judgments. It takes some user effort, but the judgment the information is reliable. We talked about the pseudo feedback, where we simply assume uh, top ranked documents to be relevant. We don't have to involve the user. Therefore, we could do that actually before we return the results to the user. And the third is implicit feedback, where we use click throughs where we don't we involve users, but the user uh, doesn't have to make explicit effort to make judgment.